You see this here? That is my Magical Bride album. And this here is my Magical Bride 2023 promotional CD that I made. And this here on my door, I think I already showed this, but I'm going to show it again. My Magical Bride album art. I used a portion of my dress to wrap this in, and it turned out really, really nice. I have pictures on my Instagram. And here's the thing. And I made some CDs. Limited copies. <laughs> so I took one of my album arts from the CD, and I put it in a picture frame, and I put a tassel like this. I put it on with one of my necklaces that I used to wear. I made this little thing and clicked it on and I put some little feathers and stuff on. I made this gift and it's because the person who drew the art, the album art, in 2010, when they were evidently done, they were in a bedroom across the hallway from mine. And we were staying at Huber Heights. She gave me the actual album art. She had a drawing, she gave it to me. I said, what's this? She said, it's for you. You can have it. So she gave me a gift. And I remember thinking during that time, with my circumstances and everything, what am I going to do with it? It's more stuff when I'm homeless that I have to carry with me. And I'm not thinking, like, being rude. I'm thinking it in my brain. What would I do with it? And long story short, she let me know that I don't know, you could use it like album art or a poster or t-shirts or whatever, you know? Because she knew that I was into music and considering doing musical endeavors of some sort. After all this time of doing good, have it all. I was finished in 2019, like around November, and I made my album art for, for Could Have It All Ragtop. And then, because things were going pretty decent, I decided I was going to work on Magical Bride. And that took some time to even come into the name. That's what I call the album Magical Bride. And with that being said, I was actually excited about using the album art, finally, <laughs> for something. Because in all honesty, especially because I was, at that time, I was into doing photography, like modeling and stuff like that at the time. And I, I was like really into physical fitness during those times. And so I was going to the gym a lot um, when I was on the road and everything. But I was into photography and I figured out would use of me, you know what I mean? For an album art. Um, <laughs> and some of this stuff was not necessarily what I was talking about, but it turned out like it did. Some of it I really like and some of it's kind of goofy. But here's the thing. So that's all right with me, though. I have a good sense of humor. I, I was reflecting back in time during the, our conversation, during times I lived at Huber Heights, during, throughout my whole life when I wrote the songs, um, even all the way down to Chestnut Street, you know, when I lived, when I was about 10 years old, et cetera, et cetera. So I reflect throughout my life while I'm working on my music and stuff in the studio. I think it really contributes to the psychology of it and my servanthood becomes greater in many ways. Um, and my endurance is encouraged because I realize things. I realize myself, for instance, you know, self. You look back and you're kneeling down to yourself and you realize what you were going through mentally during those times. So it kind of gives you uh, the strength, more strength, because you're doing it for that person. You're doing it for you. The you then, the you now, the you and everywhere between. And for different reasonings, of course. And it's not just you. When you get into it, that's what people would say, well, that's what you're focusing on you. Yeah, when seeking God, because that little head is filled with all kinds of God. Psychology. So I started to use this album art, and I put a lot of time into it, as I do all the album arts that I put into my picture frame. Okay, I'm so glad I got this camera back. Okay, all that takes time, whether it's preparation to do the photograph, to get the cameras ready, make sure the lenses are clean and stuff, and the batteries are charged. 
make sure that uh, they're reformatted and things. But I did touch-ups to it. It was a scanned copy. Unfortunately, because I was homeless, from what I remember, because I was homeless, one time I went into my bin, and this was during an emotional hurt time. The truth is, any time that I were going to be heading back out into who knows territory, the reality of it is you try to take with you as little as possible. You can let people suck your dick for a hotel room, but you're not going to do it for a storage unit of stuff if you're smart. In other words, God showed me your life means more to you than stuff. So you try to hold on to what you're willing to hold on to and where you have room to hold on and the other stuff. <laughs> bye bye. In the picture, evidently, the art was ripped. It was torn and it actually disgusted me a little bit because it was a symbol to me that I cannot keep things like that neat when I'm homeless. In other words, if I had a real home, I would have been able to keep that piece nice in a filing cabinet, packed away, as I do now, things. It was pretty destroyed from moving things around and all that other stuff, I ended up throwing it away. Okay, from what I remember, because I also had a scarf by, you know, Elvis Jr., I think I threw that away or that right around the same time, pretty much so. Now here's the thing, check this out. That took me some time to put this together to make my album art put everything in a physical form. A lot of delicate time was put into that, even selecting cases from Goodwill. <laughs> I go to Goodwill and I'll get used cases and stuff, because I only need like one or two. It gives me something to do. I'll look for jeans or something if they have a pair or whatever, because, you know, there's always something that I do need that I really do need, and uh, but, uh, it's like time <laughs> while I'm working on these other things. I don't have the quality time to actually sensitively, childlike, do the other things that I would love to do like that. Like shopping, <laughs> you know? For jeans or clothing, okay? <laughs> so I ended up getting uh, cases at the thrift store at Goodwill. And I always look for the better cases. Okay, it's so like in almost new condition. Sometimes they're saran wrap too. Minimal scratches and stuff or cracked and things. and. Uh, it gave me inspiration and ideas when looking at these CDs and stuff like that. I think I got one from the Titanic movie. It was a soundtrack for it. I think I have some of the songs. I think I downloaded them on my computer. I definitely listened to them, you know, after I was done with all of this. That was one of my things I've been wanting to do is listen to some of that. Because I got a couple of them for my different album art that I see around here. Yeah, like that. Okay? I don't know which one was which, but... I'll use Windex or whatever and clean them really good. I'll listen to the music that's on the CD or whatever if I like it. i either hold on to it or download it onto my computer. And if I don't like it, then some of it I couldn't believe what I was listening to. i just throw it away. I don't think anyone should be listening to it, in my opinion. Some of the stuff that I heard this last time. And it was supposed to be like child story-like. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. It's kind of like a horror movie almost in a way. You know, mild as it was. I put my name with it and everything. And I thought this really turned out great. I'm so proud of myself because when Jaylen gave it to me when I walked into my bedroom, I understood that there was a huge difference. Jaylen's room was dark. My room, I was really focusing on trying. That's during a time that I was trying to make myself smile. I was trying to exercise smiling more often and, and trying to be happy even though I'm extremely depressed and I got all this other stuff going through my head I'm decorating my room you know with uh, the speakers and stuff that I'm listening to on on the TV and stuff like that so um, and I thought to myself and I had full understanding in my brain I was thinking that I would do something you know only because of uh, all the new stuff that I came into at that time. Transgendered. Um, I was escorting and I, li I, I was starting to figure out what worked for me with the camera at times, you know, for doing photographs, the distance and all that other stuff. 
So I was thinking I would want to do something like that. It's one album. That's how I ended up having my little cartoon character, you know, which I ended up liking a lot anyway. So I was hurt when I made that one. That was during the same time because it just didn't turn out right. And at that time, I really felt like I really needed other people or someone special that um, I had a connectivity with that would see me similar as to what I've been realizing and seeing myself. And I realized that that's difficult. Not too many people see you like you see yourself. So it's probably better that you do a majority of a lot of things yourself. <laughs> Just like when you write a song, and a lot of people might not acknowledge how much of a huge hit that song is, meaning it's a powerful, powerful, powerful rock song. I would think that most people are insanely crazy if they don't respond somehow in me knowing that they agree with me, okay? How could you not feel that way? You know what I mean? Why would I be in the company of others that don't feel the same way about that? At least one of them. You don't, and I understand not every one of them. For you, for me, they're pretty good. I'm pretty fair about that. I know which ones are, yeah, they're pretty good. They're like album songs. They're great to listen to, but, and I know a great opener song. I know a great live song. I know a great video production song. I know one, uh, some that should be in theaters and orchestras, you know? Musical ensembles, you know? Magnificent. So I put it together, a gift, and I know that I asked her in April of 2021, if I made her a gift and went to give it to her, would she accept it? And she told me no. Okay. When she said no, I tried to give room for in a loving way to, okay, if that's how you really feel. I wanted to give you something though, you know. So then I won't push that, but at least let me show it to you. So understand this was in 2021. I said I will be back. I don't know when because I wanted to finish out this project. It took me all the way until recently. And I went over to give her gifts and to show her what I made, and she refused to take the gifts. And I asked her a few times, at least let me show you, you know. I wanted her to open up the picture frame with my dress and a picture frame that I got at Michael's. And I put my CD sleeve inside of that picture frame, and then I put made my chain with the purse thing on it and then feathers on it too and clipped it on I put a clip on it I took a sh old shoestring and I wrapped around it and put a rubber band on it I found use for the rubber bands that I always wished that I would have taken back to Walmart I put it on the gift that made me very happy but she wouldn't open it I kind of wanted to show her the album art so I, sh I shared that with her and she was looking at it a little bit and the, one of the first things she said is that you didn't put my name on it. And I said, you didn't want me to put your name with it. I asked you that. I asked her that in 2010. And in 2010, she didn't want me to use her name. She said, no. I said, well, you got to sign it or something. You're giving it to me as a gift, right? And from what I remember, I'm not 100% sure on this one, but I think she said I could use her initials, but not her name. She didn't want me to use her name. That I did know. She would not sign it. So I opened up the album art, and I showed her where I gave credit for the album art. It's Jalen, you know, her name. It was done by Jalen Robinson. That's what she goes by. She did look at the CD label, and she did look at the cover a little bit but she would not open the gift. And she told me she did not want it. And it was very unfortunate for me, but she insisted that I leave. She didn't like, evidently, that I was using the album art, even though she told me in 2010 that I could, that it was for me. She gave it to me. It's yours. You can have it. She gave me the actual drawing. It's like me drawing on here, and she gave it to me. You can have it. Just recently, she told me, I gave it so that you would have hope. And my brain was telling me, Jesus Christ, it gives me hope. My hope was in Jesus during that time. My hope was in God's word during that time, not the album art. 
that just wouldn't even make sense to me. But she was trying to be of assistance because I was looking to start a rock and roll ministry. I was trying to uh, give her gifts. I made an agreement of facts, truth, of how I received the album art. And I asked her if she would sign the paper, and she wouldn't sign the paper. And I asked her to reconsider, because it doesn't give me entitlement to the album art as my own property. It just gives for me to use it like she said I could. That's what the paper was for. So I could do CDs, and if I wanted to do t-shirts or posters or anything like that. People drive me nuts. She said not now. Maybe some other time, but not now. So I said, well, I'm going to use it anyway. You said I could. I keep meeting fucking assholes as I go through life instead of nice people. Number one, I don't need the album art at all. In fact, I told her I didn't want it anyway back then, in 2010. I said, you know, I wanted to give it back to her. And she didn't want it back. She said, it's yours. Because I even asked her, what is this of? I sat down in the bed. I sat down beside her in my old bedroom, which was hers before it was mine at that time. And she told me, I don't know, it's you. And then she described the picture and stuff. Okay? And I was just like, me? That's how she sees me. During that time, I thought that she saw me exactly as ugly. And that's what I thought. Because I didn't really look at the album art like I do today, though. Because that's where my brain was then. I can't help where I was then. And today I don't think that way of the album art. I think it's a, a really nice looking uh, drawing that she did. I still have the paperwork. I wish she would sign the paperwork. I give her a copy. I'm not holding nothing from her. I give her gifts too with it on, you know. I had a, a logo that I used when I was self-employed for seven and a half years. And I didn't make one penny off of that logo. You make money off of entertainment. The logo that I used back then was for promotional purposes. I used it for everything. I wouldn't do that with that. That would only do a couple things like I'm doing now with it. It became an album cover, you know. I have my picture frame. That's pretty much it. Ever since getting out of doing musical endeavors, and especially because I spent a lot of time homeless and meeting a lot of different people and stuff, I would say that a larger percentage than not of people ended up being assholes. <laughs> all the way down to it. So I come home, I have my gifts, they're still uh, with me. If J. Owen would ever call me and she would invite me or uh, want to meet with me, I would most certainly love to still give her the gift, always. But personally, I don't see that happening and I'll tell you why. Because when it became heated in her, not me, when it became heated, she got very aggressive and demanded that I leave her house. And because I am very much in tune, I looked into her eyes and I saw that she was overthrown because her eyes were all black. And I told her if she opened the door for me, I wouldn't leave. And in my opinion, she was pretty rude to me. I can't put into words how foolish humanity is. Jaywen drew that art piece. She finished it at least while I was cleaning my room living in Huber Heights. I was under the impression that she actually drew it, which was mind blowing. Because she told me she just finished it now. She just drew it now. She just finished it. And I thought that she drew it during the time that I was cleaning my room. It was probably about a half hour, 45 minutes. That's a lot of details to a drawing, to draw it that quick. And the fact that she wanted to give it to me was very impressive because I mean, I know other people that drew, people in my family that drew. And I understood that that's a whole other skill, you know, at that time, I mean. And a gift meaning in itself, to be able to draw. That's something I'm not good at, and, you know, at this time. I might be in the future, but, uh, you know, because I don't underestimate what can be done with the psychology that I've come into. I'm convinced that living in the world's way, your brain doesn't function properly. People's brains don't function properly. And it took years for me, being here working on my music, for my brain to be a little bit what I would perceive as healthier. Too much going on when you're engaging in human 
communications and relationships and stuff like that. And living in the world's idea of life, you know, going about it on a daily basis, you know. Everywhere you go, every store you walk into, every time you get gas, every time, you know, uh, even respecting your governance's laws, you know, the speed limit and shit like that, you know. I mean, it's just not realistic, you know. Just like with this, when I first came out here, the speed limit was 55, then they put it up to 70. Hooray, okay? It's a hell of a lot more enjoyable to drive from here all the way down to Logan. Do you know why I drive down to Logan at 70 miles an hour? Because I could not find somebody to do what I do in Logan on Medicare insurance without having to prove myself. And there I didn't have to prove myself. I just went in and talked to him and showed him and away we went. I didn't have to check in with the insurance company. It kind of sucks. Insurance should cover more, 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 not less, more. More of what people want, not less. And you know what most people's complaints are? They can't fucking afford it! Everything is a down-talking people away, okay? And then when they walk into a store and take off with a, a grocery cart full of uh, TVs and stuff, you get pissed off because they realize they're not going to have anything unless they just walk in and take it. Do you understand? We get into the word of God and nobody's guilty, are they? Nope. Not in the eyes of God. Well, when's man going to come into the eyes of God? Ever? They were fucking threatening me the whole time I was working on my music that other people were going to steal my music and use it. Do you know that? Isn't that pathetic? That's what they do to recording artists, but nobody really talks about it, do they? They do it to everyone. Let me tell you something. On this planet, I'm not convinced anybody's going to steal anything and get away with it. How? Where? Where are you going to run to? It's all ridiculous. Me being condemned while I'm sitting here and trying to record. Now here's the thing. I saw Jalen's eyes. They were black. And I understood. I'm not talking to Jalen. In fact, they had her unconscious. And she sounded more like she was drunk when she was talking because she was slurring. And here's another one. She was in a garage. It was dark. She refused to turn on the light. It's pretty wild, isn't it? I always try to have a good time no matter where I go. But I understood she's dealing with some stuff. And I don't really want to say too much more from the description of it all. But I had acknowledgement that uh, things must be pretty challenging for her. They have laser lights. You can see them. They're all different colors. They have black ones to blend in with the shadows. They have red ones. They have white ones. Now, how do I know this? I can't help their evil as shit, but they make me laugh. You know why? Because there's times my studio, when my lights are off, looks like a freaking 70s disco floor. You don't believe me, though, do you? White lights. Every once in a while, they flash my studio with these lights. They come from the sky. They don't come from the frickin' street light. They don't come from the apartment next door. They come from way up there somewhere. They want you to believe that they have drones and all these other things. They have other stations. These son of a bitches control how much sunlight we get throughout the entire United States at any given time. They control the rain. They control the tornadoes. And whenever they want to build something somewhere, there have tornadoes come through. And I'm convinced that whatever demonotic aliens or people with the technology are, they talk through people, screaming through people. And she pretty much screamed for me to get out of her house. And I understood because I was listening to her talk and they put humans pretty much out of conscience and then they override their body. Electricity. Electricity has been going through my body head to toe for over six years. That's them plugged into me. I've asked them several times to leave me alone and go bother someone else. I sit here, I can't shut up. I even tell them. I try to hold my mouth shut. That's how cruel they are.
There's no way in hell I can be living on my own, waking up every day, screaming my lungs out, unstoppable or controllable, and I can't shut the hell up because something is talking through me. And the things that it's saying, the torturous things that it's saying, I worked years of my life to try to think differently, and I find out that I'm not thinking differently by myself. There's somebody else connected to my brain that nobody's telling me about, which causes problems. I'm still going to use the album art. I have it online and stuff. I worked my ass off on all of it. So, you know, I got the paper. I'm hoping someday she'll come to her senses. J. Owen has left me know that she wanted to be a part or she wanted to be of help to the transgendered community. And that's one reason why she gave me the album art, because she wanted to be of help. Then when the time comes and she's faced with, look what I did with it, all of a sudden it changes. What really upset me is she told me if I would give her finances to help her, her cat, then she would sign the, the paper. And I told her I would not do that. If you sign a paper, I want it because you want to sign it. I feel sorry for your cat. And I told her that, in my honest opinion, I'm sorry that you don't see that being honorable to what you said in 2010 is more valuable than whether or not I contributed finances to have your cat helped, so to speak. So in other words, she would not sign it unless I gave her money. And she told me, for now, I don't know how I'll feel later. Which I respect that. She might need time to think about it. A connect psychological connectivity to 2010 when we were in the room together and she was all for it. It's almost 13 years. I finally had the opportunity to do it. And now she's not interested. Well, that's great. So when I came home, I would have to say that I figured. That is the way that it has been for me every single fucking time that I was connected to any of the human beings <laughs> as I went through life. That's the world's way. I'm not natured like that. If you teach people into the head, every question I ever had begins to be answered. The brain. Serve your brain. When you serve your brain, guess what? You're not going to do life like other people. So I left J.O.N.'s. I'm still using the album art. I hope to talk to J.O.N. again someday. I hope she gets the help that she needs. I wanted to be able to reach out to one of the other girls in the community that lived at Hooper Heights for a little tiny bit or stayed there for a little while. I say hi once in a while on Facebook. See, I'm not stuck mentally. It's just that I've been so consumed and focused while I'm recording. Kind of like locked in mentally. It's almost like all of 2010 and 11, all the time I lived at Huber Heights and stuff, is in my brain while I'm recording, you know? Focus point. I did my I Know video the other day and I was so pleased, so happy, very grateful I think that is one of the more beautiful scenic areas of the river for me because I like to walk along the river. Like literally, you're like right beside it on the stones and everything right beside the river. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. I often wish that I could have like some kind of, not a jet ski, but something that would be like electric that you could actually ride on the river instead of rowing a boat. You could actually ride it. I would love to go for a cruise down the river. I went jet skiing only a few times in my life. It was through connections or whatever. If I was on vacation, I would rent one or whatever. Here's the thing, check this out. I often think, because I did like riding jet skis the times I did, I often think I'm not really one to do the whole canoeing. I would, but I mean, I'd rather kind of like just cruise and relax and, you know, I don't need nothing fast. I don't need to show off. I'm more of just going through and seeing the scenic view of it. And rather than using like a rowboat or whatever, I think I would rather have like something I can straddle, like similar to a jet ski, but not that big, just something small. 
that you could actually be on and you could just kind of put down the river and go check it out, you know? So I've always wanted to go for a river ride since I've been here and I've yet to do it. <laughs> Meaning, I don't want to do it. Like you might think when I say that, I always say it would be cool to go for a cruise down the river, you know, on something like that. I know of somebody that I met that's out here, they go canoeing a lot of times and they post videos online and stuff. And it's fun and it's relaxing to watch. I have my morning coffee or whatever and I watch that. And I still think the same thing. I would love to go down the river. There's a lot of beautiful areas in the river. Uh, I don't know if that's legal or not legal or, you know, if that does something with the water, you know, uh, with the side of the dirt or whatever the deal is, you know. I forget what that's called, but, you know, there's reasons why they don't have, like, speed boats in the river. Okay. <laughs> anyway, good night. Tracy Lynn, also known as V-Cat, with my pretty little lights. See my bunny rabbit? This here was on one of my favorite pair of sweatpants. They went to, like, my knees. Okay, I pull them up here to my like my knees or whatever. They were those kind of sweatpants. I forget what they're called, but they're not like the full leg length. And here's the thing, my sister gave me them and they ended up being my favorite pair of sweatpants that I would wear a lot of times. She gave them to me when I was homeless and I used to stay over at her house from time to time. So I had something to wear while I was there. That wasn't like lingerie and stuff, you know. She had given me that and I wore them for a very long time. They were my favorite to wear, especially at nighttime. And at some point when I took them over to the laundromat, they got ripped up and stuff. So what I did is I cut this patch off out of the sweatpant and I just laid it here and it's stuck on my lamp. A little bunny rabbit. Isn't that cute? And then I added my new lights because all my Christmas lights went out. For the, like the last couple of weeks, I didn't have any Christmas lights in here on my lamp. And I finally put up my purple ones I got like last year. As I try to keep a backup of Christmas lights with me. It's intimate. It provides an intimate atmosphere to me, you know. I love Christmas lights and stuff. I like Christmas-ish time of year. I wanted to make this video for a very long time, not necessarily this way, not necessarily complaining or screaming about stuff. All right, everyone. Adios. Sorry for all the screaming.